Yes, I know, I'm too late on this video. I know I should have done this first, and you guys most likely skipped her already, and are on your way to pulling for Yoimiya, or maybe saving for Raiden. But the Kamisato clan isn't a slouch when it comes to design either, and particularly when it comes to performing. So I thought maybe I should tell you all the things that you didn't know, and probably might make you regret not getting Ayaka. Hey guys, what's up, Aru, and I'm sorry for not uploading for a week. I was busy moving to a new place, and I also have a sore mouth apparently while I was moving. The way I speak is gonna be a little bit different than usual so I'm really sorry for that as well. But back onto the video. Yoimiya's banner just released but I've already made a Things You Missed video on Yoimiya. I didn't think it'd get that many views so please go check it out. You might even end up wanting to pull for her even more. So check that out right there on the corner. Hopefully I put it. Future me please put it. And I thought well why not make people regret not pulling for the beta character we were all waiting for since 1.0 especially her almost tear-jerking performance and what might her dance mean so stick around and check out these 12 things that you obviously didn't know about Ayaka's character design Ayaka's clothing first and foremost starts with her skirt called a hakama these are a type of traditional Japanese clothing originally stemming from the trousers worn by members of the Chinese Imperial Court in the Sui and the Tang dynasties now this style was adopted by the Japanese in the form of the Hakama in the 6th century and made their own adjustments to it as well. The Japanese Hakama are tied at the waist and fall approximately to the ankles. These are also worn by the Japanese warriors known as Samurai. Now Hakama, especially those for martial arts, may have 7 deep pleats. Pleats are basically these folds that you see on Ayaka's Hakama. Usually there are two on the back and five on the front. Although they appear balanced, the arrangement of the front pleats, three to the right and two to the left, is asymmetrical and as such is an example of the asymmetry in Japanese aesthetics. Now here's a bonus right off the bat. Hakama are worn by Miko, not Miko, but a Miko or Shrine Maidens who assist in maintenance and ceremonies. A Miko's uniform consists of the plain white kimono with a bright red hakama. Sometimes a red naga bakama which are basically hakamas with a division right in the middle, are used during formal ceremonies. At number 2, patterns and motifs are often similar to what you would usually see on kimonos and yukatas, and are often reflective of its wearer. Ayaka's hakama has patterns of a river. I know it may not look like a river, <laughs> looks a lot like smoke honestly, but it's a river nonetheless. Now, river patterns, kawa as they're called in Japanese, or winding stream represent continuity and the future, which we often see in Ayaka's story quests. Always moving forward, always continuing to her goal, and no matter what she may face or may come upon, she helps and lends a hand to whoever needs it, as well as appreciate whenever she's given a hand herself. She always remembers, however, that she still must continue her own journey. This also reflects her fighting style. Always moving forward, continuing, and never stopping. On to the third thing that you obviously don't know about, or maybe you do, Cherry blossoms represent the fragility and the beauty of life. It's a reminder that life is almost overwhelmingly beautiful, but it is also tragically short. And no matter how fleeting it is, its beauty and in its best moments are surely a spectacle to behold. You'll see a lot of cherry blossoms placed all around her clothing, and this reflects Ayaka a lot, in both herself and the way we interacted with her in her story quest. Next, there's actually a snowflake motif on Ayaka's Hakama. Now, the use of snow as a pattern dates back to the Muromachi period and at the time, the snow pattern was associated with winter season and tea ceremonies were developed in this period. So, the Kamisato family is most probably a trendsetter in Genshin Impact's timeline. But nowadays, snow is also used in summer. This may be due to the sensibility of Japanese people who seek for a sense of coolness from snow through associating it with the cold winter season. Snow is once taken as a representative of the naive and innocence behind here heroic undertakings and also as a subject of prints and paintings in special combination with cherry blossoms, much like Ayaka's undertakings and even Yoimiya in their personality and their story quests. At number 5, her top can be described as a manchira, but Aru, why not a haori or a kimono? Well, I'll tell you. 
Hauris and Hakama that are worn as a set are only seen on samurai in their rituals, and sometimes as everyday clothing, and it is also worn in battle as overcoats, to ward off against the cold. Now there's one key tell that it's a manchura instead of a hauri or kimono, and it's her stiff collar. A manchura is a type of armored vest often covered with plates, chain, or brigandine. These armored pieces all have their own Japanese names respectively, so you can't flag me down for mentioning European armor types or armor names. Anyway, wearing these armors or a combination of them were sewn to a cloth backing. Mancheras sometimes cover the neck and the armpit much like a sleeve. And the manchera that Ayaka is wearing could be a one-piece manchera with a sleeve and a collar and is apparently left open on her upper chest and neck area. Underneath could probably be an undershirt tailored to fit her manchera or just cloth undergarments called a sarashi. Now I'll leave that to you guys' imagination. 6 and 7 is going to be a combination of two things into one. First being the Uwa Obi. Now Uwa Obi are a type of belt or sash that was worn by the samurai class and their retainers in feudal Japan. The Uwa Obi was used to attach a sagio or saya cord of the sword or swords worn by a samurai in order to secure it. Other weapons and equipment would be tied to the Uwa Obi as well, including water flasks or maybe a Japanese dagger. Now I say a combination because it's also tied up like a Hauri Himo. Now the Hauri Himo is what you usually tie up at the front with two short cords, which attach to small loops sewn inside the garment. So my conclusion is that she's wearing an Uwa Obi, which is what samurai wear around her armor to hold her sword, that is also tied up much like a Hauri Himo in the front. Number 8 is a continuation of the previous Hauri Himo. Now did you notice how all these designs are related to each other? Pretty cool right? The numerous tassel knots seen all over her aesthetic are called Hanamusubi in Japanese. But these kinds of knots originate from the Chinese flower knotting Zongguo Jie. Zongguo Jie. Hopefully I didn't butcher that, which were then popularized and spread all around Asia. Hanamusubi are more austere and formal and structurally looser than the Chinese knots. In function, hanamusubi are more decorative than functional, greater emphasis on the braids that are used to create the knots. As for why Ayaka has a bunch of these hanamusubi on her person, I do not know. At number 9, the armor pieces that Ayaka is wearing are all part of a bunch of armor sets that are usually worn all together. But of course, creative freedom and aesthetics won't let that be. So the first piece of armor is her breastplate or cuirass called do, basically a rough translation of a breastplate. Plate. The specific type of dough she wears is the Hotoke dough, which roughly means the Buddha breastplate or the Buddha cuirass, and is a reference to the smooth, round bellies of Buddhist statuary, just like this one. The armored sleeves around her arms are called kote, specifically a shorter half sleeve called the han kote, which is basically called half sleeve. A kusazuri made from iron or leather plates hanging from the front and back of the dough to protect her lower body and her upper leg. This is often mistaken for the haidate, which are the inner armor built to protect the thighs instead, and are attached to the leggings instead of the dough. Lastly, she wears a helmet called a kabuto in the form of a hairpin. No, that's not included, I'm just kidding. It, just, it looks like a kabuto, but it's just a hairpin. On to number 10, as traditional Japanese footwear goes, similar to Yoimiya and every other person around Inazuma, Ayaka wears what's called a geta. And the specific type of geta she wears is called zori. Zori is the best choice for a kimono, but they can also be worn with yukatas and whatever fashion you would like to wear. These rounded sandals can be made from vinyl, cork, or brocade, or any number of modern materials. Traditionally, zori are low, but modern styles can have platforms in varying heights. There are also varying style types, especially on the design of the heels and its relative height. But these are all inside the zori classification of geta. At 11, there are various symbols in Japan associated with fans. The fan itself is a symbol of prosperity as it spreads out when we open it, similar to that of a blooming flower or a widening of wealth. The type of fan that Ayaka uses is known more simply as a folding fan. The original incarnations were made from bamboo covered with Japanese washi paper. Today, they are typically made of paper, sandalwood, or silk, but cloth and cotton ones exist too. Sensu fans make great gifts as they're compact 
beautiful, and practical. These fans became such a hit that laws were created to restrict their use to particular social classes. Typically crafted from Japanese cypress, known as hinoki and thread, the number of strips of wood on each fan was meant to reflect the rank and status of its owner. Finally, at number 12, we have her performance and her dance, which were taken from the Mai and Odori, basically meaning Japanese traditional dance. The words Mai and Odori are the two main groups of Japanese dances. And the modern term Nihon Buyo was coined in modern times as a general term for dance by combining the word Mai, which can also be pronounced as Bu from Buyo, and the word Odori, which can also be pronounced Yo, Buyo, meaning Mai Odori, with Ayaka's performance focused more on Mai. Specifically, the no mai, where it's put together by a series of forms, forms that are patterns of body movement that are done specifically slowly for no mai dances and are performed elegantly and with beauty. The use of the fan would often symbolize a plethora of things, including a tray, a sunrise, the wind, rain, cutting with a knife, cutting with a sword, drinking, and other items or ideas. Sometimes it could portray a person or any type of being. Sadly, we won't be able to tell what Ayaka's story is telling since only Ayaka herself knows what her performance means. You could make your own interpretation of her movements and gestures that she makes as you rewatch her after watching this video. Now, there's also a traditional dance called the Sagi Musume, which means the Heron Maiden, and it's a whole plethora of stories that is too far from Ayaka's current storyline. I'll link it down in the description for you guys to check out. But here's my take on her performance right after we part ways with her in her story quest. Now doesn't that just bring out the MC X Ayaka shipper in you? Anyways, all those together, and you get none other than the pure, kind-hearted, overly polite, shy, and can't cook but makes great tea, the Shirasagi no Himegimi herself, Miss Kami Sato Ayaka. And there you have it guys, the 12 things that you obviously didn't know about Ayaka's character design. I know it's late and you guys probably want to pull for her now after finding this out, but hey, if you didn't like her when she was being shy and hung up, you didn't deserve her when she finally showed her true self to you. And to those who pulled for her, without a second thought, congratulations, you just pulled a lifetime waifu. Well, she can't cook, but she's full of surprises that only a keen eye and a wise mind can notice. So that's gonna be it for this video, I'll see you guys later. Bye! Outro party! I have no idea what kind of video I should make, but hey, I'm glad that you guys are still watching up to this point. If you have any ideas on what lore-ish videos or whatever video I should make, even if it's not lore, I don't I don't mind, maybe I'll do it. Comment below with the letters with the letters OP for OP for outro party at the start. <clears throat> that way I know you guys were still here listening to my ramblings at the end of the video. <clears throat> Anyways, thanks for watching up until now. Uh, I don't know if I should make uh, uh, another catchphrase, something, I don't know, Filipino maybe? I don't know, like paalam or mea ulit, I don't know. I'll leave it blank or something for now, like an awkward silence. <laughs>